Xenia is a very capable emulator, although you might be forgiven for thinking it's lacking features. Certainly, the user interface has been rather basic since the beginning, and having to change settings in a config file doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. However, someone recently made a front end for the emulator, called Xenia Manager. It looks promising, but is it easy to set up? And are there any issues we should be aware of? Let's find out. The front end is easy to find online. Just Google or Bing Xenia Manager and click on the first link that appears. After that, scroll down and select the latest stable build. This will download it to your computer. For the purposes of this video, I'll create a desktop folder and call it Xenia. This is where I'll install both the front end and the emulator itself. The next few steps are pretty self-explanatory. I'll open the downloaded archive and extract the contents into this desktop folder. There are just two files inside the folder, as you can see. The rest are downloaded once I run the installer. From there, you will have an option to download the stable or canary build of Xenia. Ironically, the stable version isn't that stable, and most games have bad performance, so the canary version is the superior version. Once everything is installed, we can have a look at the folders. Here you can see the emulator folder itself, and you can even go inside and start Xenia the old way if you wanted. The executable is still there. The old config file is also here, and it's something you need to be aware of, since it will become relevant in a short while. I have a few games here, which I will move inside the Xenia folder. You don't have to, and if you want to keep the games somewhere else, that's also fine. Now we can finally have a look at Xenia Manager and its various functions. I'll start by adding the games, and I'm happy to report that the front end fully supports both XEX and ISO image formats. I'll even show you, so just watch. All right, I think that looks rather good so far. I'll just add a few more for fun. Let's have a look at the basic settings now. At the top, you see Open Xenia Installer. This will lead us to the same window as before when we downloaded the Canary version. It is possible to have both the Canary and Stable release in one folder. But like I said, the Stable release is a waste of time. As for the themes, you can change the user interface color, and this is a pleasant surprise in my opinion. I don't think you can do this in RPCS3. Let's zip through the emulator settings quickly. Under audio, switching to X audio can fix random crashes. Reducing the max queued frames to 24 can also be helpful, but I've never experienced sound related crashes, so I'll leave it alone. Under display settings, switching to full screen will start games in full screen mode. Internal display resolution is important, but only because increasing the resolution tends to break graphics for most games. Under NVIDIA settings, make sure to force VSync on. This is to prevent screen tearing. As for the graphics API, it's best to select DirectX 12. Variable refresh rate should be turned off as well. Resolution scale works a bit differently from just raising the resolution normally. For example, changing the value to 2 doubles the pixel count, and you can see how this can suddenly become quite demanding on hardware. Also, after chatting with some folks in the Xenia Discord server, I learned that it's very hit and miss, so use it with caution. I didn't change anything under anti-aliasing since the overall image becomes too soft at 720p. And I didn't try to increase the sharpness either, because then the edges become too jaggy. It would be better to increase the resolution, but that's not advisable with this emulator. Under general settings, you may have to change the license mask. Some XBLA games are somewhat finicky, and may require that the license mask be turned on. Xenia automatically detects peripherals like controllers, so there's not much to change here. Sometimes games require specific settings to work properly, like Forza 2, for example. It needs mount cache to be activated, 
Every game has its own settings profile, so we'll head on over to the Forza 2 profile and turn this feature on. Now let's see if the setting change worked for Forza 2. All right, it seems we're successful. There wasn't any error or crash. The only thing left to do is to install some patches. It's ridiculously simple. You basically right click on a game's profile and follow my example. A few games actually require patches to fix some graphical issues, but you can also change other things like the frame rates. Like I said, it's very simple. Anyway, if you found this useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.